Romanos IV Diogenes, also known as Romanus IV, was a member of the Byzantine military aristocracy who, after his marriage to the widowed Empress Eudokia Macrambolitia, was crowned Byzantine Emperor and reigned from 1068 to 1071. During his reign he was determined to halt the decline of the Byzantine military and to stop Turkish incursions into the Byzantine Empire. But in 1071 he was captured and his army routed at the Battle of Manzikert. While still captive he was overthrown in a palace coup, and when released he was quickly defeated and detained by members of the Duca's family. In 1072, he was blinded and sent to a monastery, where he died of his wounds. Accession to the throne Romanos Diogenes was the son of Constantine Diogenes and a member of a prominent and powerful Cappadocian family, connected by birth to most of the great aristocratic nobles in Asia Minor. His mother was a daughter of Basil Argyrus, brother of the Emperor Romanos III. Courageous and generous, but also impetuous, Romanos rose with distinction in the army due to his military talents, and he served on the Danubian frontier. However, he was eventually convicted of attempting to use up the throne of the sons of Constantine X Ducas in 1067, while waiting to receive his sentence from the regent Eudokia Macrambolitia. He was summoned into her presence and advised that she had pardoned him and that she had furthermore chosen him to be her husband and the guardian of her sons as emperor. She took this course of action primarily due to her concern that unless she managed to find a powerful husband, she could easily lose the regency to any unscrupulous noble, and also because she was infatuated with the popular Romanos. Her decision was met with little protest as the Seljuk Turks had overrun much of Cappadocia and had even taken the important city of Caesarea, meaning that the army needed to be placed under the command of an able and energetic general. The problem Romanos and Eudokia had in executing this plan was that Eudokia's deceased husband, Constantine X, had made her swear an oath never to remarry. She approached the patriarch John Zifilinos and convinced him both to hand over the written oath she had signed to this effect, and to have him pronounce that he was in favor of a second marriage for the good of the state. The Senate agreed, and on January 1, 1068 Romanos married the Empress and was crowned Emperor of the Romans. Campaigns against the Turks Romanos IV was now the senior emperor and guardian of his stepsons and junior co-emperors, Michael VII, Constantius Ducas, and Andronikos Ducas. However, his elevation had antagonized not only the Ducas family, in particular the Caesar, John Ducas who led the opposition of the palace officials to Romano's authority, but also the Varangian guard who openly expressed their discontent at the marriage of Eudokia. Romanos therefore decided that he could only exercise his authority by placing himself at the head of the army in the field, thereby focusing the whole government's attention on the war against the Turks. By 1067, the Turks had been making incursions at will into Mesopotamia, Melitna, Syria, Cilicia, and Cappadocia culminating with the sack of Caesarea and the plundering of the Church of St. Basil. That winter they camped on the frontiers of the empire and waited for the next year's campaigning season. Romanos was confident of Byzantine superiority on the field of battle, looking on the Turks as little more than hordes of robbers who would melt away at the first encounter. He did not take into account the degraded state of the Byzantine forces, which had suffered years of neglect from his predecessors, in particular Constantine X. His forces, mostly composed of Sclavonian, Armenian, Bulgarian, and Frankish mercenaries, were ill-disciplined, disorganized, and uncoordinated and he was not prepared to spend time in upgrading the arms, armor, or tactics of the once-feared Byzantine army. It was soon evident that while Romanos possessed military talent, his impetuosity was a serious flaw. 
Campaign of 1068 The first military operations of Romanos did achieve a measure of success, reinforcing his opinions about the outcome of the war. Antioch was exposed to the Saracens of Aleppo who, with help from Turkish troops, began an attempt to reconquer the Byzantine province of Syria. Romanos began marching to the southeastern frontier of the empire to deal with this threat, but as he was advancing towards Lycandus, he received word that a Seljuk army had made an incursion into Pontus and had plundered Neos's area. Immediately he selected a small mobile force and quickly raced through Sebasta and the mountains of Tephry to encounter the Turks on the road, forcing them to abandon the plunder and release their prisoners, though a large number of the Turkish troops managed to escape. Returning south, Romanos rejoined the main army and they continued their advance through the passes of Mount Taurus to the north of Germanicia and proceeded to invade the Emirate of Aleppo. Romanos captured Hierapolis, which he fortified to provide protection against further incursions into the southeastern provinces of the empire. He then engaged in further fighting against the Saracens of Aleppo, but neither side managed a decisive victory. With the campaigning season reaching its end, Romanos returned north via Alexandretta and the Cilician Gates to Podandos. Here he was advised of another Seljuk raid into Asia Minor in which they sacked Hamorium but returned to their base so fast that Romanos was in no position to give chase. He eventually reached Constantinople by January 1069. Campaign of 1069 Plans for the following years campaigning were initially thrown into chaos by a rebellion by one of Romano's Norman mercenaries, Robert Crispin, who led a contingent of Frankish troops in the pay of the empire. Possibly due to Romanos not paying them on time, they began plundering the countryside near where they were stationed at Edessa, and attacking the imperial tax collectors. Although Crispin was captured in exile to Abydos, the Franks continued to ravage the army near theme for some time. In the meantime, the land around his area was again overrun by the Turks forcing Romanos to spend precious time and energy in expelling the Turks from Cappadocia. Desperate to begin his campaign proper, he ordered the execution of all prisoners, even a Seljuk chieftain who offered to pay an immense ransom for his life. Having brought a measure of peace to the province, Romanos marched towards the Euphrates via Melitna and crossed the river at Romanopolis hoping to take Aklit on Lake Van and thus protect the Armenian frontier. Romanos placed himself at the head of a substantial body of troops and began his march towards Aklit, leaving the bulk of the army under the command of Philaretos Brachamios with orders to defend the Mesopotamian frontier. Philaretos was soon defeated by the Turks, whose sack of Iconium forced Romanos to abandon his plans and return to Sebasta. He sent orders to the Ducks of Antioch to secure the passes at Mops Westia, while he attempted to run down the Turks at Heraclea. The Turks were soon hemmed in in the mountains of Cilicia, but they managed to escape to Aleppo after abandoning their plunder. Romanos once again returned to Constantinople without the great victory he was hoping for. Affairs at Constantinople Romanos was detained at Constantinople in 1070 while he dealt with many outstanding administrative issues, including the imminent fall of Bari into Norman hands. They had been besieging it since 1068, but it had taken Romanos two years to respond. He ordered a relief fleet to set sail, containing sufficient provisions and troops to enable them to hold out for much longer. The fleet was intercepted, however, and defeated by a Norman squadron under the command of Roger, the younger brother of Robert Giscard forcing the final remaining outpost of Byzantine authority in Italy to surrender on April 15, 1071. While this was playing out, Romanos was undertaking a number of unpopular reforms at home. 
he reduced a great deal of unnecessary public expenditure that was wasted on useless court ceremonials and beautifying the capital. He reduced the public salaries paid to much of the court nobility, as well as reducing the profits of tradesmen. His preoccupation with the military had also made him unpopular with the provincial governors and the military hierarchy, as he was determined to ensure they could not abuse their positions, especially through corrupt practices. He incurred the displeasure of the mercenaries by enforcing much-needed discipline. Romanos was also deeply unpopular with the common people, as he neglected to entertain them with games at the Hippodrome. Nor did he alleviate the burdens of the peasants in the provinces. All this animosity would help his enemies when the time came that they moved against him. Nevertheless, he did not forget his principal target, the Turks. Being unable to go on campaign himself, he entrusted the imperial army to one of his generals, Manuel Komnenos, nephew of the former emperor Isaac I, and elder brother to the future emperor Alexios. He managed to engage the Turks in battle, but was defeated and taken prisoner by a Turkish general named Krauj. Manuel convinced Krauj to go to Constantinople and see Romanos in person to conclude an alliance, which was soon completed. This act motivated the Seljuk Sultan Alparslan to attack the Byzantine Empire, besieging and capturing the important Byzantine fortresses of Manzikert and Archesh. Romanos, in return, offered to officially exchange Manzikert and Archesh for Hierapolis in Syria, which Romanos had taken three years previously. Battle of Manzikert and capture by Alparslan. Early in the spring of 1071, whilst conducting negotiations with Alparslan over Manzikert, Romanos marched at the head of a large army with the intent of recovering the fortress. It was soon evident that the army had a serious discipline problem, with soldiers regularly pillaging the area around their nightly camps. When Romanos attempted to enforce some stricter discipline, a whole regiment of German mercenaries mutinied, which the emperor only managed to control with the greatest difficulty. Believing that Halparslin was nowhere near Manzikert, he decided to divide his army. One part of the army he dispatched to attack Aklut, at that time in possession of the Turks. Romanos himself advanced with the main body of the army on Manzikert, which he soon recaptured. At this point his advance guard met the Seljuk army, which was rapidly approaching Manzikert. Romanos ordered the forces attacking Aklut to rejoin the army, but their portion of the army unexpectedly came across another large Turkish army forcing them to retreat back into Mesopotamia. Already under strength, Romano's army was further weakened when his Uzi's mercenaries deserted to the Turks. Arslin had no desire to take on the Byzantine army, so he proposed a peace treaty with favorable terms for Romanos. The emperor, eager for a decisive military victory, rejected the offer, and both armies lined up for a battle, which took place on August 26, 1071. The battle lasted all day without either side gaining any decisive advantage, until the emperor ordered a part of his center to return to camp. The order was misunderstood by the right wing, however, and Andronikos Dukas, who commanded the reserves, and was the son of Caesar John Ducas, took advantage of the confusion to betray Romanos. Claiming that Romanos was dead, he marched away from the battle with some 30,000 men, instead of covering the emperor's retreat. The Turks now began to press in on the Byzantine army. When Romanos discovered what had happened, he tried to recover the situation by making a defiant stand. He fought on valiantly after his horse was killed under him, but he received a wound in the hand, which prevented him from wielding a sword, and he was soon taken prisoner. According to a number of Byzantine historians, including John Skylitz's, Arslin at first had difficulty believing the dusty and tattered warrior brought before him was the Roman emperor. He then stepped down from his seat and placed his foot on Romano's neck. After this sign of ritual humiliation, however, Arslin raised Romanos from the ground and ordered him to be treated like a king. 
From then on he treated him with extreme kindness, never saying a cruel word to him during the emperor's eight-day stay in his camp. He then released the emperor in exchange for a treaty and the promise of a hefty ransom. At first Alp Arslin suggested a ransom of 10 million nomas matter to Romanos IV, but he later reduced it to 1,500,000 nomas matter, with a further 360,000 nomas matter annually. Betrayal. In the meantime, the opposition faction scheming against Romanos IV decided to exploit the situation. The Caesar John Ducas and Michael Salos forced Eudokia to retire to a monastery, and they prevailed upon Michael VII to declare Romanos IV deposed. They then refused to honor the agreement made between Arslin and the former emperor. Romanos soon returned, and he and the Ducas family gathered troops. A battle was fought at Dokir between Constantine and Andronikos Ducas and Romanos, in which the army of Romanos was defeated, forcing him to retreat to the fortress of Tyropoion, and from there to Adna in Cilicia. Pursued by Andronikos, he was eventually forced to surrender by the garrison at Adna upon receiving assurances of his personal safety. Before leaving the fortress, he collected all the money he could lay his hands on and sent it to the sultan as proof of his good faith, along with a message, As emperor, I promise you a ransom of a million and a half, dethroned, and about to become dependent upon others, I send you all I possess as proof of my gratitude. Andronikos stipulated that his life would be spared if he resigned the purple and retired into a monastery. Romanos agreed, and this agreement was ratified at Constantinople. However, John Ducas reneged on the agreement and sent men to have Romanos cruelly blinded on June 29, 1072, before sending him into exile to Prote in the Sea of Marmara. Without medical assistance, his wound became infected, and he soon endured a painfully lingering death. The final insult was given a few days before his death, when Romanos received a letter from Michael Salos, congratulating him on the loss of his eyes. He finally died, praying for the forgiveness of his sins, and his wife Eudokia was permitted to honor his remains with a magnificent funeral. Family by his first wife, an unnamed daughter of a Lucian of Bulgaria, Romanos IV Diogenes had at least one son, Constantine Diogenes, who was married to Theodora, sister of Alexios I Komnenos. This marriage was arranged by Anna Dalasina after the death of Romanos IV, but it was short-lived as Constantine perished under the walls of Antioch in 1073 while serving with his brother-in-law Isaac Komnenos. By his second wife, the Empress Eudokia Macrambilicia, he had Leo Diogenes, born in 1069, and according to Anna Komnena was made co-emperor during his father's reign. In the reign of Alexius I, he was taken into the imperial palace and given various high commands. He died in Alexius's campaigns against the Pekinegs in 1087. Nikephorus Diogenes, born in 1070, 